Good morning and welcome to Moments of Encounter. My name is Father Mike Irwin, pastor at St. Catherine Drexel Parish in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, as well as the Tri Parishes in Kleiman, Reeseville, and Alba. Honor to be with you this morning. And as we're cruising through this little time of ordinary time, other churches in Christian world call it Epiphany time, both time, both make sense, as we are getting to know Jesus Christ better, almost like for the first time and therefore understanding how to apply him more clearly in our lives. And today it's all about the call, you know, when God wants us to follow him. And so let us pray. Loving God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us, that with the gift of the Holy Spirit we can help to find the voice of Jesus Christ whispering into our ears a guidance as to who we are to be, how we're supposed to help, and how we are loved. Send your spirit also to help us to this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call you? This is the reading from the Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment, he said. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. Amen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I think of this understanding of being fishers of men, it's really hard not to think of the old movie with Matt Damon called Good called Good Will Hunting. Uh, and the title of it is a triple entendre meaning that they the guy's name is Will and and so they're trying to find the good part in Will and so they're hunting for the good part of Will. But it also takes good will to be able to be able to do that. And in the process, they have to find goodwill in not only the main character, Will, but they have to find goodwill in their own hearts and in other people in the world because this guy named Will was himself pretty beat up, pretty hurt. Some childhood trauma going on, very talented, uh, found himself pretty out of control and very difficult to get along with people, hard to maintain friendships, hard to succeed, hard to, hard to use all that talent. You know, a lot of people wanted to use his talent, uh, but they were having a hard time being able to rein it all in until people could really find some goodwill in, find some goodwill in their heart to find the good in the other person's heart long enough to listen to the trauma and have sp- respect and gentleness and understanding until the point that person could be even at peace with themselves. Uh, to me, and here by being fishers of men, that we are meant to go out there into the world, and yeah, people might treat us a little bit roughly. They might even say some awful things to us sometimes. But usually that comes out of a woundedness. I spoke about this last week that or two weeks ago even, about people who try to be superheroes in the world, but usually superheroes are built off of woundedness. And so they oftentimes just end up hurting one another out of that woundedness. 
we need to be able to step back a step instead of just reacting to each other, instead of just reacting to some of the negative on us and the mean spiritedness of each other, to try to take a breath and to say, what's really going on here? And to help ourselves to pray about it and to think about it and to get to know the more of the story of the other person. I mean, really, that's what it's mean, meant to be. A, really, that's what it's mean, meant to be a fisher of men. And somehow Jesus is doing that in this gospel reading here. He is able to go along the way and search out these people. I don't think we ever heard the whole backstory on Simon. You know, why was it that he, the healing voice of Jesus, was so willing to drop everything he was doing and go and follow him? All we know is that in the process, he was willing to give up a lot. You know, he was willing to give up some of his family, this career, um, other options for his future. He's willing to give up on all these things to the one who offered healing. Really, that's what I think we are called to do as well. In order to bring healing to other people, we end up having to ourselves find healing. Recently, I got to go to a wellness seminar again. It's always good for us to get a refresher course on it. And to say, what is good to get a refresher course on it? And to say, what is good health? That was a big question. And it's a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And, of course, the spiritual people would say that's also not only physical and mental and social, but also our souls as well. As we head into this new year, a lot of us make physical goals that we're going to find time to go for a brisk walk every day, or we make sure we eat something that looks like salad every day. And, and so we take care of that physical element of ourselves, and in the process, it actually helps us mentally. It actually helps us mentally. Uh, just a little hint for all of you that you know, we take a little bit of a break and go for a brisk walk or somehow breathe in some fresh air. It's like taking a smoking break just without the cigarette. We are able to find ourselves not only physically feeling better, but it tends to clear from a little bit from the challenges that are all about us. And that's what smokers would normally do. But without the smoking, just step outside, breathe some air, maybe visit with somebody and just change one's mentality for five minutes in the middle of a work day. What a great gift that is. Uh, so that's one. So that's one piece of it. But sometimes our own souls have our own hurts that are carried with us sometimes created by us. Maybe we have regrets for things we did in the past. Most of us do. Um, as well as, you know, regrets of what other people have done to us. Is how can we either find a path towards healing these things, um, maybe making amends to other people. That's what the 12-step program would really encourage people to do, is to apologize and to try changing the situation at least somewhat for the better. So that would be a thing, to, a thing to do. Or just simply be able to forgive. Let's say that's not possible. Maybe the person who hurt us, we don't have contact with on a regular basis. We don't need to. Maybe the person's died and gone before us. And so you know, maybe there's just no other way to do that. But by forgiving, being able to say, I acknowledge what happened in the past. I'm not going to easily forget it. But I'm not going to carry it around as an emotional burden anymore. I'm going to choose to let loose of it. Will allow us to maybe find greater healing, greater peace. Therefore, we can be more present to our current mo current moment, and be more eager to walk into the future and all that the future has in store for us. And so, healing the soul is good for the body. Because the more we carry around these burdens, the more it leads to chronic health problems as well. Um, but also, we find ourselves being distant from people socially. If we've been injured by folks, we're, more, we're less likely 
to reach out and trust the next person we meet, to make new friends, to realize it's not uncommon to maybe let go of some people from our past and say yes to her. If we're going to live to 100 years old, as our uh, community health initiative called Blue Zone says, then we'd certainly want to be able to let go of some of those things in order to make new friends, make new relationships, and have a new way of doing things socially. And after we, for aiming for 100 years, we might have to do this every 10 years or so in order to kind of go into a new uh, mode. So instead of referencing the movie about goodwill hunting, we could also reference the movie or the cartoon series about Green Lantern, that there's a willfulness inside of each of each of us. And our goodwill, our will that is inside of each of us to attack things and to make them better is far greater than the darkness of the universe, especially if we were to work together on things. I'm grateful to see that COVID is COVID is diminishing somewhat in our area. It's not exactly freed up. It was in awful shape in November and December, and I was the first to raise the big alarm that we need to really be extremely cautious in November and December. But it appears that mercifully in Wisconsin as a whole and Dodge, that COVID is reduced somewhat, not to safe, safe levels, but better. And so we can reach out to people and in safe ways build relationships. Maybe you've been away from the church for a while because you're super nervous. But now, because of this little bit of reduction in COVID, reduction in COVID, and because we have a lot of protocols in place in church, you might find yourself coming back for church. Maybe you want to play it safe and do a weekday mass. Those are at our parish center here in Beaver Dam every morning at 8.20 in the morning. We have a a weekday mass and usually only have 20 people there so you can find the within the parish center to sit away from people but otherwise get plugged in get plugged into the physical presence of Christ in the Eucharist get replugged into just at least seeing people in the same room and having an activity of that sort because each of us needs a social healing as well and that's where we're fishers of men that's where we want to come together as church Obviously, respecting this is really a dangerous pandemic. But at the end of the day, maybe there's some ways to connect one with the other and be able to check in on each other. I'm so grateful that church has learned so many new technologies technologies in this pandemic. They're not new technologies. They're just new to the church. And we've gotten better at doing that so that we can connect with folks in a two-way way system to be able to intersect with each other and care for each other. Hopefully we find ways, especially during this winter, to be able to do that. And therefore we want to be able to continue to pray and continue to pray for all the possibilities in our world and pray for our country as a whole. I know there's been a lot of divisions and there's still a lot of hard feelings out there on either side. And it's good for us to speak the truth and just strive to figure out what is the truth. It's always easy. And so there's going to be some arguments still going on back and forth, one with the other. And, but hopefully with an open-mindedness that there is a thing called truth that we can keep searching out and we can be able to get to. And that this truth is, the nature of truth is that it's a shared reality. reality. And that the shared reality is possible. It has to be possible because there is only one send of truth. There is one through whom all the universe was created, the Logos, the Christ. And therefore, there is only one word. There is only one truth. And hopefully we can keep gently but actively searching for that by being able to be in conversation with each other. And so let us pray. Loving God, you give us so many good gifts. We thank you for this opportunity this morning to be able to pray and to open up our scriptures. Help us to say say yes to you being a fisher of men to us and to let ourselves be found by you, God. And to, in the same way, help us to be fishers of men and women around us, that we can find the good in each other, to know that it is there, and help each other in injuries, in a sense of forgiveness, hope, and grace, that we will be able to find health 
in ourselves as individuals, in ourselves as a community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God bless you. Again, I'm Father Mike from St. Catherine Drexel. Again, I'm Father Mike from St. Catherine Drexel in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, as well as the tri-parishes in Kleiman, Reesville, and Elba. May God bless you.